guys and welcome to another inbox review. This time it's of the Ravel Lancaster Mark 1 slash 3 in 172nd scale. Um I I think this one was off a friend, if I recall correctly. Um did a swap for a kit, um and he said, you know, you can have a Lancaster for whatever kit I gave him, so yeah, here we are. Um, it comes with six acrylic paints, brush and glue. Probably won't use any of them except with brush if it's still in there. I can't even remember if it is. I mean, I looked at it when I first got it and that was about a year ago. So, um, it's got over five. There you go. It's a bit bright in here with the lights and dark evening so if you hear any crashes and bangs don't worry it's just the wind again middle of winter brilliant um, so box art has just the, the actual Lancaster on it nothing special to be honest so let's just dive in the top has nothing the side has stars the bottom has circles, eye circles, well, pentagon sort of things, and the other side has stars, so absolutely nothing in the box. And the back just has a general blurb and stuff down there, without copyright there, and recycling over there. So, in the box we have a lot of stuff. Uh, right, so let's put the box over there. Right, I think first off, I'll show the paints two, three, four, five of them. Doesn't appear to be a sixth one anywhere, but I'm not going to worry too much about that. Probably wouldn't have used them anyway. So we've got Dark Earth, Rust, Dark Green, Matte Black, and Sea Green. No five paints. Put them over there for Dora I'm making. Ravel Glue. Would have been nicer if it was in a pot with a nozzle, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. Um, instructions have again the kit, um, Ravel, Avra, Lancaster, B, Mark 1 slash 3, um, printed in Germany 2007, so not too old of a kit. And they've got again general blurb down there that you usually see. Um, in first German, then British, well, English, British, what am I about? Um, and again, more just random stuff. So, first page we have, I presume, our war, yeah, warnings and stuff. I've read them a bunch of times before. Down there. Nice little assembly icons, so have a part of sprue, cut off sprue, um, glue together if it needs to be, paint with like holding the tweezers and whatever that else means. Bog standard. Um, I'm just trying to get the light glare off a bit. Um, is it? No, oh, it's this one that's doing it. Can't really help that too much unless I do something like that but then it's not really it's a bit better I suppose or something oh well anyway um decals glue don't glue options times two um assembly number I think um repeat Illustration, what's that one? Detach with knife, leave to dry, and take together. So, 
Yep. Seen them before. Here we have the paints with my usual post-it note on it for the Ravel colours. Um, it's just a lot easier, I find, because if I could actually get hold of it, because I use Humbrol, so convert them as soon as I get the kit and don't need to worry. So, down there, it's just got some more assembly icons. Here's all the paint colours in Ravel, my Humbrol ones there, so if any of you want any listings of it, just have a look there, pause the video. Um, if I zoom in with a tad here, wait, no, wait, god damn it, it's all upside down. Right, so, sprue mappings, so one sprue has um, top and bottom half of the wings, two fuselages, again top and bottom half of the wings. Um, engine cowlings and bits, um, tail fins, the two that go at the ends, props on there, um, don't appear to be any pilots on there but oh well. So the first instruction shows cockpit assembly, um, the dashboard as I call it is the decal so that's not going to be a problem probably um, control yoke and the seats it, what so apparently there's one pilot I thought there were two in a lank okay off I honestly thought they were too up front in the bank, but that could just be me. But what I can see upside down anyway, that looks like one. Dunno. Anyway, um Navigator and stuff are quite a similar layout to the B17. You'll just see me build um on the channel if you ain't seen it, you know, just pop over, have a look. If it's not interesting then you know, don't have to watch but Anyway, um, getting more parts of the interior going on and showing the bottom of the. Is that the bottom of the main floor? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's the bottom of the main floor. So, instruction 2 has. If I wiggle the camera back a bit. Like that. Okay. Right. Uh. right. Then I go for that. So we have more of the interior going on. I presume that. We'll go across for the to support wing slightly there. Then you know snip these bits off on the fuselage sides, painting guides and um, places to put all the parts there. Uh, that's the top. Goes yeah goes in the top, I presume for the navigator or whatever. Not navigator, the top gun shooter, what, whatever his name is. Um, and that gets installed into the fuselage. All the bits together, so the cockpit getting put in and everything. Wings together. Um, horizontal stabs together. And there, all assembled on. Really starting to look like a length there. Um, nice touch is they actually make the engines properly as with the Ravel um, B17 so that's a nice touch there even if it's not much it's still nice um, more of the engines the bulkhead 
being assembled. Um, some of the wing spars going on there with some of the undercarriage bay. Um, I can't quite make out what that is upside down. So you guys are looking at that way, like back this way, and I'm looking at that way, so it's quite disorientating, well, not disorientating, but confusing. Anyway, there's the engine going onto the bulkhead, and then the whole engine assembly going in to the, the cells. Um, I presume that's the backer for the props I can only presume and there uh, we put the nacelles together keeping it all nicely packaged in closing the engine away so you're not going to see it again but it's nice they added it in um, engine bays going on with the exhaust and stuff going on there and then we move on to here. That's the engine bits going on, undercarriage legs going on, um, the wheels going on, wheels onto the undercarriage, um, both sides, whatever that, our oh, gear door, put them on, or the option to keep it closed between those two. Um, then we have the bomb bays, which has a huge amount of configuration. So we have 18 of those bombs, whatever size they are 250, 50, 100, 500 pound bombs, whatever. That, whatever it is, Grand Slam or something, I think. Um, and obviously, the 18 here you can put in three different ways. I think I'll probably, well, uh, don't know, I'll fill it right up probably when I actually build the kit in about a year's time or something. After building this B17, I'm getting a bit bored with long, big projects. Um, Bombay door, you know, option to have it open or closed, so cut it in half there, or if you want to open or keep it as it is, just pop it on for closed, in which case you don't need to put any of the bomb bait on over there. Well, you do need to put the actual bomb bait on, but none of the bombs in. You can keep them for another project. Um, the end plates, whatever you call them, going on. Rear um, wheel going on, just up into the fuselage. First parts of the glass, um, guns, uh, so top, yeah, just there. Them two go together, pop on there to get that looking good and proper, and then that part goes over the top of them. There's part the clear, blah, 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 blah. clear parts go on to a clear part because that makes sense in my head um, and then the main canopy and windscreen going on there and already on to structure almost 60 so it's not, that's the glue oh well um, more bits and bobs going on the top turret backing going on to it then the rear turret getting made here so See that all goes together, pops onto the back, and the props. I'd probably paint them separate, put them on right at the last minute. Um, is there an area or something there? Um, radar, I think, something like that. One um, little tiny bits going on over here. Actually, this whole bit here is tiny little aerials and bits, so the last, I don't know, 10 steps are going to be a right pain in the ass. So, yeah, that's going to be fun. Like I say, when I eventually build it in about a year.
So, first tackle option. Um, Mark three, hundred squadron. Um, Elsham Wold, Elsham Wold, uh, Elsham Wold, April nineteen forty-five. So, um, I presume that's a completely black bottom with the dark leaf and dark green, uh, with the yellow um, fins there. I can only presume. Um, then the second one is a Mark One Nine Squadron Bard Bard's Knee, nineteen forty-five. So both in the same year, just different squadrons and stuff. Um, I think that's a white tail, white and black tail, if I remember rightly, from when I first looked for it and everything. And again, the same sort of camo there with different markings. So, um, quarter of an hour video already and I've only got onto decals. Right, let's get going a bit. Um, the decals are nice and creased. I can flatten them out a bit, I think. Not overly bad, I can put a book on them. So we have... Whoa, whoa, well, I can't where the camera's going. The 100 squadron tackles, the what was that? Nine squadron, yep. Then all the rest of them, commons. So the main markings, the roundels, the fin markings, cockpit, and all the walkways and stuff. Um, they look all right, printed by Ravel in Italy. So, yeah, usual Ravel tackles, so. Not usually got anything to complain with about them, but there's always got to be something to moan about. Just get a tad, get the white off. Right. I think I'll leave the glass for last. Right, so we have the massive fuselage there. Not sure how well it's showing up. Nice detailing on the other side. It's got just those bits there. Just nice subtle details in it. Um, the wheels are huge. If I just a minute get the B17. Just proper pops on. Pro pop the props off of it. The B17 fuse large is that big compared to this one which is that big so together it's going to be an almighty diorama. Why am I putting that on black? I need to put the B17 back. Right. Yeah I'm planning to put these two together on a airfield base but it's just a matter of time before I decide to build this one. Um, down here we have engines, parts of the engines, that's the undercarriage, I think, main undercarriage. The exhausts, more undercarriage parts. Um, from right, that's, um, yeah, um, whatever they're called, gear doors. The nacelles for the engines, so the engines will go just in the front here. I've done to catch going in there. And last main part is the air intake just here. On the second sprue, we have a broken off propeller. Um, looks right. If it will, there you go. See that little bit of it is just the, where my finger is, there. It's just the um, part where it's broke off, but looks right, even though it has broken off. 
Um, other side of the fuselage shows a lot of. If I turn it that way, it'd probably be easier. A lot of detail of like I'm assuming radio based stuff, not great with this sort of stuff. Um, and the usual just bits and bobs in there. We have three propellers remaining. I see the ones over there broken off. Again, the fuselage has nice panel lining on it. Nothing too over the top, but then it does its job. And I presume there the wing spar bits that go in next to the wheel wells. Um, bombs are there. So I'll put in all of them on. Folded both sides, so there's going to be no seam lines, hopefully. I say hopefully because there probably will be. Um, and for some reason, the next two are in bags. Huge bags, actually. Right. Uh, how does this make sense? Unless this is just a correction. For the other sprues, because we have, again the engine cells and that, the wheels, on this one, and then we're back to the props and bombs. Unless they're the two different types, I can't think of why else I had to put them in the kit. But oh well, they're literally exactly the same as the other one. Now on to the main thing that makes an aircraft an aircraft, which is the wings, obviously. Um, I presume that's part of the radar bit that I said about the instructions. Pop that one out there, right. Bombay doors. So, obviously. If you're doing it with a bomb open, it'll cut right along that line. Probably be better to do it from the inside where it's nice texture. Um, no idea what that is. Not a clue. And then, obviously, the main floor on the other side. Bomb bay. So that bomb bay is going to be absolutely filled on the board kit, as I said. The end plates, um, I don't know, what, I might cut the rudders off. When I do it I might cut the rudders off, put them in a position, just to give it a bit more detail because I did that with the B-17, but on the B-17 it was actually an option. Um, the first of the wing bottom bit things thing. <laughs> um, nice detail in it if I can just catch it right in the light. I can sort of see that thing. Um, obviously, again, it's one sided, so I'll probably glue, cut them off before I glue it all together. And position them. No idea what that V is for there. Um, I have to look back for the instruction booklet. Um, there we have the stabilizers. Um, separate pieces again. Why can't I just mold it in one? So much easier. Um, and then again, the top half of the wing with nice detail on that. Then the other one, just about the same, the wings, um, engine cells, they have nice de detailing on them, I could pronounce my words, um, and they have two little seats 
So obviously I presume that's a newer version and that's a slightly older version so obviously one of them only one of them got upgraded. Um, and sort of the bulkheads and stuff to go through the fuselage and yeah that's about it on this kit. Um, the dashboard does have a texture to it so you can paint it if you want but decals are easier most of the time. Um, and the clear parts we have many of. Right, so the main canopy bit, if I put something under it. can see it looks sort of okay so hopefully you'll be able to see quite a lot through there oh depends on how I put okay if it if I bugger up the inside and I don't want to see much for it to be honest but there's the parts that end up going on there just in the sides here and then obviously you've got the rest of it, that, no I don't what that's for, I really don't have a clue. But, yeah, there's a the clear part, so it's, I can honestly say I don't think I've seen any flash on this kit, so that's an upside to it. Um, all together, I think it'll be a good build, if it will go together alright. Um, yeah, like I said, I want to put it on with the P17, make a nice diorama, maybe have P51 or Spitfire or something like that. Um, the paints I'll probably use for the diorama base rather than the actual kit, because I always just use those paints for that job, because half the time they've gone bad, which is the reason they put it in half the time. Oh god, it's all gone wrong. Stick the deck over there. Shiny glassy over there. And see why we're at this way in the box. There we go. Right. So, that's the reason it won't go in the box. It's bloody bent to death boxes. So, um, yeah, looks like an alright kit, if you get offered it, I'd go for it, um, obviously keep an eye out for, on my channel and other channels for builds of it, to see how it goes out then, but yeah, in the meanwhile, just keep up to date with my videos, other videos, do your own modelling, whatever, I'm not really bothered. Um, if you're new, like and subscribe because I'm thinking about doing a little um, competition to see if I can get 200 before my birthday at the end of January. And if I do, I might find a kit to give away. So keep an eye out for that. Or I'll think about it, depends if I get anything decent for Christmas and I think I can give anything else away. But yeah, like and subscribe if you're new, um, always show support and until next time I will see you on the next video.